Hi, welcome to the Dan Bradbury podcast where turnover is vanity, profit is sanity, and cash is king. In this podcast, I'll bring you resources, tips, interviews, and lots more to help to grow your business and make it less dependent on you. Hi, I'm Dan Bradbury. And I'm Topher Morrison. And welcome to the Dan Bradbury podcast. Dan, my friend, uh, before we get into talking about entrepreneurial business, uh, number one, I'm going to get to how you're doing because I do care. But right now, I just have to vent. I've got three big issues going on in my life, and I, and I need to address them with you. Uh, I'm, I'm slightly excited and slightly mortified. Okay, number one, I'm going to get the big one out of the way. Two days ago, I bit my tongue so hard that my uh, my canine tooth punctured my tongue. Now, I got my tongue pierced when I was 25. It did not hurt nearly as bad as me chomping down on my tongue. It was so bad, it bled for nearly 24 hours. It just stopped bleeding last night. Uh, it is swollen up like the, I feel like I have a golf ball on the end of my tongue. So I may let you do most of the talking. And I'll just sit back and go, uh-huh, uh-huh, because I am so scared that I'm going to get talking up a storm and I'm going to bite my tongue again. That's my first issue. So I could use a little bit of empathy. Do, 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 I was going to say, do I wait for all, all of them to go through or do I comment? Because the first and most obvious question is, like, who bites their tongue? Although I can concede. Well, I, you've, I, never I, bite, you've never bit your tongue? Well, I don't remember biting it so hard that it bled for 24 hours. Oh, I, dude, uh, it's not only that, it's bruised. The tip of my tongue is actually dark purple bruised. It's gross. Yeah, I, 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 and done. I get it. Like, you know, if you get an ulcer on the tip of your tongue or whatever, and it's just annoying that everything you eat or, oh, yeah, so I get it. So all right, all right. I feel your pain. Point number two. Second thing. Second thing. I try to be environmentally friendly. I try not to use plastic straws because I love turtles. So the other day, I'm, I, I don't even know where I'm at. I'm at some place. And I don't have my plastic cup that I try to take with me to have filled up with the plat, you know, that's got the reusable straws and all that stuff. So trying to be nice, I say no straw because I know I'm going back to my office and I have my reusable straw that I could use that goes with this cup. Compliments right. of cup culture. Anyway. Are you, so are I, you getting sponsorship for this podcast? A podcast yeah, on yeah. the side without me knowing <laughs> yeah, about it. Uh, uh, Cava culture, all of your Cava needs. So when I drove, when I drove yes. back from the uh, shop in my brand new t uh, Tesla Model S, <laughs> yes, which by the way I love. Um, uh, all right. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, I said no straw. I'm going back to my office. I've got my reusable straw. So then I get back. I take the reusable straw. I stick it in the plastic cup that it came with. And I drink it and I say to myself, got to be rememberful, if that's a word, got to be remind, got to be mindful not to throw away the cup with my reusable straw. Guess what I did? Threw away the cup. Yeah. So now I'm having my green hippie, which is uh, ginger, kale, cucumber, apple. Uh, and I got no straw to drink it with because I also said no straw. And I got back and realized, oh, I actually did throw away. So I'm a little bummed because I feel like I've cursed some turtle someday. Well, yeah, and I mean, a risk, I want to say, um, my partner's uh, helps ingrain in me. She's she's militant for the planet, for the planet. And therefore, and by the way, you guys in the US are horrendously bad with waste more than the UK. So it is outrageous. Yes. Uh, but at the same time, I want to say this is a first world problem. Are you lamenting the fact that you threw away your reusable straw? Well, first off, okay. Uh, but there's a second component to that, which is that I'm cheap as hell. And spending $10 on a straw has really chapped me now. So here, here's a shock, Tofa. Have you thought about just not using a straw? <gasps> Well, that's what I'm doing now. So maybe I've discovered that it works. All right. Well, well done. Well done. So, so actually, you're helping, yourself, uh, you're helping yourself be more frugal. Maybe, maybe. My third issue is a good one. Today is National Dog Day in America. Woo! I'm wearing my shirt. Dogs, Dogs are better, better than, than therapy. therapy. Yep. And uh, today, I must say, proud parent, I bought my dog a billboard on the busiest intersection in Tampa. 
And so this is the most ridiculous uh, thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's awesome because well, now well, I, 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 what I'm fearful a about a thousand people just, are going to know who's the best dog in the world. Just, I was going to say just to uh, just to just to warn everybody listening, and I feared and Toby's just giving away it is as bad as it sounds. I was going to say I suspect you haven't bought it for her as an investment. Like, oh yeah, let's get let, let's have this real estate that we can we can rent out and we can have a we can have a rental income mate. Because for those listening, they should know that that you know. Topher's a dog dad, but effectively, Topher's not suitable for long-term adult relationships. So, so, so therefore, it's. I, I would say that Topher loves his dog more than perhaps most parents love their children, and I own Absolutely. several children and a dog. So, yeah, it's yes. it's pretty it's pretty hardcore that that. So it wouldn't have surprised me if Topher said, oh, I, I've got a pension that I've opened for Macy, <laughs> uh, or I bought her some real estate so that when I die, she's got a place to live or some such bullshit. But no, no, you haven't done that. You've just spunked a chunk of money up the wall. How much did you spend on this crap? Uh, I'm not going to tell you now. I don't feel comfortable sharing that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame you. I don't blame you on the busy end. But the thing, Topher, that blows my mind is, who are you actually doing it for? Do you honestly think Macy is not driving down the intersection going, oh, wow, he really loves me. He's got my picture up there. She doesn't give a rat's ass. Look at her. If that doesn't, if that pose, right. By the way, for those of you who listen to this podcast, fail. You really need to watch the podcast because my dog is worth logging on to watch it. And look at that dog. That that right there is the look of, she. you know what she's thinking right now? She's thinking, my daddy loves me so much. He put me on a billboard today. That's right. Well, she, she, she's out of shot for the record, but the, the um, uh, out of my shot at least. But can you show us show us what it, this what this bullshit looks like? So just so we can laugh. Uh, sorry, empathize harder. Oh yeah. So uh, here, let, let, let me let me let me pull it up for you. By the oh dear, dear God, dear God. Happy dog day. I, I would like to point out for the World's audience that to, uh, that Macy did, in fairness, get to the, I don't know, what is it, the top 10, top five? Uh, in top the five. Top five dogs in America, was it? What was the competition? Top five most, what was the most loved dog in America? I think is what the contest was. Yeah. And this is outrageous. And I do want to point out, if you spent a fraction of your time on your business interests that you do on Macy... Like you would be a wealthy man. Like. I'd probably have a lot more money uh, that I could have. I could have actually bought some real estate for my dog. All right. I think now that we've done all that crap, is it is it time to actually do some work? Should we? Should we Let's talk it? about what's going on in the news. So news of the week, yes. um, and this blows my mind, but. Uh, on the basis the UK often follows the uh, the US, the, the US's redefinition of a recession. So what's, yes. wh what the hell has President Biden done this time? It, it's actually not President Biden, although if you don't like Biden, you won't listen to what I just said and you will automatically blame him for redefining it anyway. And having said that, I'm not necessarily going to say that I'm a hardcore fan of Biden. But he doesn't define whether or not it's a recession, although he probably can put a little bit of heavy on him. Let's be honest. Right. Um, but it's actually the um, it is called the National Bureau of Economic Research. They are the ones that determine whether or not it's a recession. And it has right, been a, rece a recession since being because I've seen the headlines, yes. but the re recession being uh, as classically defined is two consecutive quarters of GDP decline. Yeah, negative GDP. Uh, and that's what it's been since like World War One or something like that, World War II. Uh, they changed it this year uh, because, and, and here's why they changed it. They changed it because never in the history of recessions has unemployment been so low. So usually when you have low GDP, you have high unemployment. This is a strange recession in that we have uh, really high inflation, really low GDP, but really high employment or low unemployment. And so their logic is that the low levels, the record low levels of unemployment are offsetting that. So that's that's what they're. That's well, what, they're what the hell difference does it make? I mean, obviously in the US, I don't think it's as pronounced in the UK, but everybody's screaming, understandably so, about the cost of living crisis. 
because uh, 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 not just of inflation, but of energy specifically. So people are really struggling. Yeah. So whether or not technically uh, we're in a recession, we're in a recession or not, you just look at it and you're going to go, huh, it's hard. Uh, like yeah, it's hard. Like Things are expensive. Feels like a recession. It, right. Smells oh, like a recession. But let's not have the label. And in, in a weird way, are they just making the problem worse? Because the media are now just ridiculing and go, oh, well, it's not a recession, but it actually is a recession. Possibly. I don't know. Uh, this is where I'm not. Uh, well, there's two things. Number one, I think um, here's the challenge I have with it is that even though, yes, unemployment is at a record low. One of the reasons for that is because retirement is at a record high. Because now baby boomers are starting to retire at, at breakneck speed every single day. We're having thousands of people get out of the workforce. So when traditionally, when inflation goes high and it gets hard and people are getting laid off, they're filing for unemployment, they're looking for work. But right now, baby boomers are just retiring. They're getting out of the labor force pool. And it's, in my opinion, creating a false number that unemployment is so low. Yes, it technically is on a, a low, but that's because there's just not enough people to fill the jobs that we had when there were people working. I just bit my tongue, by the way. Um, so you you get to talk from now on. Um, uh, and um, so, so the other thing to answer your question would be this. It doesn't really matter for hardworking people that are living paycheck to paycheck. They're struggling regardless, and they're going, it feels like a damn recession to me. Here's where it matters. It matters in investor confidence with the stock market. So if if we all of a sudden go, there's a recession out, everybody starts selling off all their stocks and they start to plummet and all, you know, uh, Wall Street starts to lose more money. So I, 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 think I had a conversation. Their stocks high. I, I mean, relative to this podcast, I had a conversation with Keith Cunningham this week. It was the first time we caught up in uh, two or three months. And uh, he, he was talking about how just funky it is in the US and it, it's similar in the UK. And was saying, well, what does that mean? And it, it was good to hear his attitude because, you know, he's an older guy. You know, he's 70 now, 71, I think. Yeah, he was just 71, I think. Um, um, or was he 72? Either way, he's old. Sorry, Keith. I love you, but it's, it's true. So, so, um, uh, and he was saying, like, he's By still. The way, sorry, you're old is still a way better compliment than he is physically incapable of long term healthy relationships. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's also true. Sorry, Topher. Um, and uh, he was like, it's funky. Now, he was still optimistic about, about the long term, which was uh, uh, kind of good to hear. And he just said, look, it's, it's going to be trickier to navigate. But for business owners, Topher, uh, we've spoken about this before. Yeah. Uh, there's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur, entrepreneur because it means it that the there are opportunities. As Warren Buffett would say, there's mispricings in the market. And I don't just mean the stock market. I mean, there's opportunities. Wow. Okay. Well, just let's, let me just look at the clock here and just see, was that a record on how fast you were able to slip Warren Buffett's name into the podcast? I think, I think maybe this was an all-time record. You've, you've done it before we even got to the hero of the week. You were able to mention Warren. Well, he, he's Welcome always Welcome to the a, Dan Bradbury he, Warren fan Buffett, fan Warren Buffett yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. That's that's fair. Uh, well, hey, all right. I'm going to say I'm going to say it now. You watch as long as he stays alive. This will be his because uh, it may well be his last recession. This this will be he will make more money in this recession uh, than he's ever uh, made in his I'll, life. I'll go so far as to say that he actually might retake the number one spot. Oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah, I, uh, if we do have a recession, it's it, well, I don't know about Bezos. Bezos will probably do okay, uh, but Elon might take a little bit of a little bit of a pounding. Yeah. So he's he's a little volatile. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, by the way, uh, since we're talking about Wall Street cats and people getting way more money than they should and trying to artificially inflate it, do we have a fail of the week? Yeah. Business fail of the week is Entain. So Entain is the, the PLC that, that owns a lot of uh, betting companies. So Ladbrokes, uh, uh, Coral, and uh, they've been given a 17 million pound fine. So, so uh, Entain chump is... Change. Chump uh, change. For well, it is product. relative to their size. Put it in the marketing I mean, budget. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're a FTSE 100 company, right? It's one of the 100 uh, uh, biggest companies on the stock market in the UK. But they were... By, by the way, can I, can I just say... Footsie, really? That's like if you're going to come up with a name for a financial organism, Footsie. Uh, just uh, na you what, you na do Nasdaq. Ooh, <laughs> it's Nasdaq. It's not Nasdaq. 
No, no, I said it right. Uh, Nasdaq. It, yeah. Anyway, uh, get over this. So, so uh, they they were fined for um, uh, ultimately for regulation failure and not taking care of people. So that the, there were loads of some really shocking examples, like um, uh, things like uh, a customer who was uh, in just one chat interaction, uh, they managed to deposit two hundred and thirty thousand. 845 pounds it was uh, he was just like chatting with them and, and people that have been flagged for uh gambling issues and they're just basically being non-compliant right w- without the appropriate checks and the, uh, and all these hardcore gamblers and it, it's hard to get on board tofa with a company that i mean inherently it's a conflict of interest right i mean if you think about it mm-hmm. that they want people to gamble and uh, I don't want to say I'm anti-gambling, but I don't gamble myself per se. But uh, they, they're giving All these of rules the vice to follow. Industries. Every vice industry has the same ah uh, that you're talking about, right? Cigarette companies have to pay for uh, cancer research, and smoking cessation programs. Gambling companies have to pay for anti-gambling stuff. You're right. It's a it's a frustrating thing, and I don't even know how I feel about it, which is why I don't invest in vice stocks. Well, yeah, I mean, you think about um, uh, I mean, just Wall Street fundamentally. Like, I, I rewatched recently uh, The Big Short. Is it The Big Short? Mm. Yeah, uh, just like great film about the conflicts of interest. It's like fundamentally, if they take advantage of people, they make more money, and that's the case with betting. Like, here's a better example, Tofa. Um, By the way, um, I don't want to go toe to toe with you and match intellectual, twi- uh, you know. Whatever the word is, but that's uh, pro- probably also, for the best. You've just proven the point. You watched, yeah, you watched the Big Short. I just rewatched Twins with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. Also that's a great a film. Big short. <laughs> that's a great. That's a great film. But I, I'll tell you the kind of conflict it brings up for me, though. So it reminds me. Um, uh, I think it was last year, Topher. The the biggest singular um, dividend was paid in UK corporate history. And it was paid uh, to a uh, a woman, a lady, D- Denise Coates. And uh, she took a dividend, I think it was of 400 million pounds. So her dividends over four years was in excess of a billion pounds. And uh, uh, at the time, it was, a, it was the largest uh, dividends in, in, in UK corporate history. And on the one hand, I was elated. I'm like, you know what? The, uh, this lady, I mean, it's a family business, but ultimately she's really driven it. And it's become uh, uh, uber dominant, right? Uh, 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 Bet365, which also sponsors a major Premier League football team over here in the UK. So it was a betting company. So on the one hand, I'm like, it's amazing. Like she's showing up like uh, uh, she's doing it for women, running a massive mm-hmm. company, unbelievable levels of growth. And, you know, she's earned the money. But at the same time, I'm conflicted because fundamentally, all those profits are made from people that lost money while betting. Yes. Well, you know, here's the thing. You can't say they got nothing in return because they got their hit. They got that emotional, "Mm," you know, that comes from gambling, but still. That's fair. I I, 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 I I've been to Vegas. I've only been once, uh, um, and I don't plan on going back. But but the the um, to be fair, I took some money and I did play the table. So when I say I don't gamble, I I don't have any habitual gambling. Um, and I took my little budget. I don't remember what it was, and I spent that on my weekend there, and I was perfectly happy. And of course, I lost all my money, and I was perfectly good, and it was entertaining. entertaining so yeah. so I can go. By the way, I can. I have a friend who always wins in Vegas. Because he has a strategy and it is brilliant. Do you want to know what it is? Is Here's he called he does. David Copperfield? No, no, no. Uh, his name is Michael Weiss, actually. Um, he's a buddy of mine. Uh, and every time he goes, he wins. And here's I do want to say, if you just named him and he's playing any kind of card counting, you do realize he's going to get hunted <laughs> down now. Yes. You're not allowed in, Mr. Weiss. No, here's what he does. He has, a, he has a very disciplined rule that the moment he gets up 10%, the moment he's up 10%, he pushes away from the table. Because he goes, he goes, think about it. He goes, 10% is a hell of a good rate of return on an investment. You talk to any stockbroker or any financial advisor, and if they can get you an, a 10% rate of return, they're crushing it, right? And he goes, statistically, you're always going to be up about 10% at some point in time in the night. So like, he'll literally say, oh, I want to buy a new TV for 500 bucks. He'll pull out five grand. He'll go gamble. 
he'll get up to 5,500, he'll push away and he's got his 500 bucks for his TV or whatever it was, right? That's a brilliant system. Huh. Gotta have discipline. Yeah, I don't, it's interesting. I don't know whether or not that's statistically valid, but... Uh, but It's probably uh, not provable. Yeah, well, if it works for him, and I, well, certainly from the handful of times I've been to casinos, I do know, like, you win some, you lose some, of course. Statistically, it is beyond shadow of a doubt. The longer you stay at the tables, the more likely you are to lose. <laughs> so so maybe he's got some very short trips. Oh, right? he does, yeah. I mean, sometimes he'll be there for 15 minutes. He's done, he pushes away. Might mm -hmm. go back the next day, but one night, one time, yeah. All right, we're getting distracted. Let's, let's talk. Okay, so, by the way... Uh, could be a segue into hero of the week, although that's not who you've chosen. But who's our hero of the week? Our hero of the week this week is none other than our very own Chad Conger. So Chad yes. does, uh, yeah, Chad does uh, all things uh, marketing here at DB, and we've worked we've worked together for oh, it must be fifteen years or so now. Well, I can I can give some insight on how long you've worked together because uh, what most of our podcast listeners or viewers don't know. Actually, they may not even ever heard the name Chad Conger. We talked about this before the show when we debated on whether or not it was uh, you being self-promotional to, to to name an employee a hero of the week. And I'm like, hell yeah, man. When employees do well, they deserve uh, to be that. Uh, side note, I'm waiting for my hero of the week. Um, but uh, you'll, be waiting uh, a, you'll be waiting a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but I can, we're just going to cheat. No, but see, I'm going to talk to at the Labor of Bureau Statistics, uh, the National Bureau of Economics, and I'm going to have them recategorize the definition for what a hero is so I can get in under it. Anyway, um, I know uh, how long you've been working for him because what our viewers and listeners may not know is that Chad used to be my employee until I hired you to come to America for six months and help me with my marketing campaign, to which... At the end of the six months, what did you do? Well, he was clearly abused, neglected, and underpaid. <laughs> so so I gave him an opportunity to advance his career. You stole him right from me. Yeah. Anyway, um, by the way, uh, but interesting, karma came back because, so you stole him from me. Poor Chad gets bounced around. You stole him from me. And then uh, who was it? Was Frank it Kern. Frank Kern? Frank Kern stole him from you. And then... Oh, no, no, no. I'm oh, sorry. Wrong way around. It was John Asraf. John Asraf. Yes. And I, yes. I, I, I so, remember. So you stole them from me. John Asraf stole them from you. Frank Kern stole them from John Asraf. And then Chad said, life was better with Dan. And he came back to you voluntarily. Yeah. So I will, uh, I will give you proper credit. He didn't call so me. So really what we're saying from all this is that I should be the hero of the week because I'm... <laughs> I'm a, a beautiful employer to work for. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that while you had it for two and a half minutes, Chad. Now the hero is Dan. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, anyway, we probably should get to why you should be the hero of the week. But I, 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 there's a lesson there for everybody, by the way. So side note, so it's not the focus of this particular podcast. It's not the theme for the week. I feel an insult coming on. Which is I fine. feel an insult no, 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 coming on. No. I'm buckling up. I'm ready for it. No, uh, on a serious note, no, it's one of culture in that. So when Chad left to go and work for John Asaraf, so he was headhunted, uh, they offered him more than double that he was getting paid for yeah. by me. And, um, and he, but he came and said, listen, Dan, I've been given this opportunity and I feel compelled to take it, but I wanted to talk to you about it to see if there's anything we could do about it. Right. And we had a conversation. We looked at it and ultimately I went, this is an unbelievable opportunity. You've got to go. So we parted yeah. as friends. We parted as friends. We maintained relationship. He was headhunted from John Asraf by Frank Kern's team, paid more money again. And then he went over there. And then ultimately he, he, because uh, we stayed connected, he went, look, I'm not happy. Yep. I want to come back. And uh, uh, I'll say he took a very significant pay reduction to come back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, the, the cultural comment is, how do you, as an employer, just maintain good relationships, open relationships? I didn't get up in his face because he was mm -hmm. wanting to go and take a job elsewhere for more than double the rate that I was paying him. Yeah, that Which, does. By the that way, speaks I'll... very highly of you. It does. Uh, well, think, by I, the way... Uh, I think you and I share that because I tend to part ways with my employees and keep in great communication with them. In fact, I can tell you that I have healthy relationships and even friendships with some of them today, even ones I don't have friendships with, they all speak very highly of me, except. The two are in prison. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but, uh, 
um, yeah, two of them. The po- we're just, not allowed to talk know, about those on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> well, they just took it personally. It was just, it was, yeah. So it is what it is. Do you, do you have people that you've had work for you that don't like you or do you have oh, yeah. relations with yeah. all of them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, look, I mean, the more people you employ over time, it's part of being an entrepreneur, right? I mean, firing people sucks and it's horrible, but occasionally, it's a numbers you, game. Yeah. occasionally you make bad hires. And it, the worst ones, Topher, for me, are the ones where the business just changes direction and you can't justify that role anymore. Those right. Cool. And it's kind of like, it's not their fault, but they still need to be let go of. And I think sometimes business owners that just um stay stuck and kind of go, oh, well, it's not, it's not the salesperson's fault that there's no marketing leads. And you're like, yeah, but you, that doesn't mean that you should pay them a salary for not producing sales, even though it's not their fault. By the way, this actually leads. Uh, uh, I was gonna, do, I was gonna give you uh, a plug until you insulted me so well. But now I'm gonna, but now I'm over it, so I'm gonna go and give you the plug as well. Because we were talking about the recession, and the plug I was gonna make was for business owners looking for strategies on how to develop good strategy during the recession. By the way, your I, I, I hate to push pull. Oh yeah, it is coming up. Thank you. Oh, all of say, a sudden he just doesn't want to push pause anymore because I'm yeah. talking about your success. No, I'm saying we, we haven't actually said why Chad's a hero. We've got we've gone off on a complete tangent. We mentioned Chad it. Who? What? In. What? We, what? We're getting off on a tangent. Who would have thought that you this and I? This whole show's a tangent. In fact, we you know, should call what, it the where, Dan Bradbury where, tangent instead of where, the Dan Brad, where, Bradbury that's podcast. Good. That's quite a nice name. Way, can I be a hero? So we've got, <laughs> poor we've Chad. Got, poor guy. First off. We finally give him some credit that is due, and all we do is ramble on for 10 more minutes of insulting one another. So, look, uh, one of the things in our mastermind we're well-renowned for is kind of financial literacy, and, and we yes. built a, uh, or I say we, Chad has built an awesome yes. finance scorecard available at denbrobbycom forward slash finance score, and people are loving this. You go mm-hmm. on, you, you, uh, you answer uh, some multiple choice questions take just a couple of minutes on your business um, and uh, it, it will score you in seven different areas. So it, it will sh- show you in these areas where you're strongest, where you're weakest, and even give you a custom 20 uh, page plan about uh, what you need to do about it in order to improve your clarity. Uh, ultimately, uh, uh, business is uh, a language. Excuse me, I'm all over the place now. Accounting is a language of business. If you need to make yeah. better business decisions, you need clarity on the numbers. Yeah. And a lot of people struggle to navigate. How do we figure out how do we fix and improve this? It's just this kind of weird, blurry topic. And this finance scorecard uh, significantly uh, clarifies it. And you can get access to that now. It's now live. It's at danbrobbycom yep. forward slash finance score. Finance score two words put all together. If you can't spell it, you're probably going to find fail the score anyway. So <laughs> there we go. There's your first test. Can you spell finance score? Um, and and Chad was the guy who literally designed everything in this entire test. I mean, he did all of the back end work. Done. He, he's just he has worked his fingers to the. Oh, bone. it's unbelievable. He's I mean, worked uh, his fingers to the bone. <laughs> The, the, I mean, Chad is a financial, uh, not financial genius, uh, no, a technical genius. Because I mean, the, the the BPM scorecard. If you go to Denbury.com, the BPM Business Profit Maximization Scorecard. I can't even tell you how many big name entrepreneurs have seen that scorecard. Yeah. Uh, uh, so from gone, hey, how do we do that? How do we how do we get it? How do we? And it was custom coded and built by Chad. I, I came up with the questions and the idea, but Chad did all the tech yep. behind it. And you can do that scorecard. At, Denbury.com uh, on, on the main homepage. But the finance scorecard is just uber helpful for those that want to get clarity on their finances, financially literate, uh, at forward slash finance school. And we'll put the link inside the show notes for anybody tuning in as well, if they just want to click on that as well. All right, my friend, let's move on. Let's talk about book of the week. What is your book of the week? Oh, I mean, this is, this is an absolute classic and it's, it, in my opinion, Topher, it's significantly underweighted. Uh, it, it, whenever I mention this, very, kind very few gem, people. Yeah. Correct. Very few people have, re- uh, uh, have read this book. I mean, on Amazon.co.uk, it does have two and a half thousand ratings, average of kind of four and a half star. But for the quality of this book, very few business owners have read it. And it is an absolute game changer. And that book is Good Strategy, Bad Strategy, The Difference and Why It Matters. And the reason why I love this book, Topher, is... Mm-hmm. 
for me, it really defined what strategy was. Um, I, I think, because I was put onto this book by Keith Cunningham, who we mentioned earlier, a long-time mentor. In fact, he's up there. Yeah. Uh, oh, always looking uh, over should, my uh, shoulder. Uh, for those of you who are just listening, he just had to point to his wall of fame with all of his glory shots of famous people that he has uh, in there. And I just want to also point out, I am still not on that wall. Uh, so I, I won't move around the camera too much because it'll miss up the general feed. But you see, there's Richard Branson up there. There's Jordan uh, Belfort from Wolf of uh -huh, Wall Street. Uh, uh -huh, um, uh -huh. uh, oh wait, here, hang on. Let me go pick this name that you just dropped off the floor. Let me get that back for you. Oh, here. here there, there's, there's there's Peter Diamandis. Uh, there's my friend Daniel Priestley. Oh, there's Frank Kern, uh, uh, who poached an employee from me, but I got him back. Uh, um, uh, I can't even remember where, where I was going with this story. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, good strategy, bad strategy. So, Keith said, you read this book. You were rubbing it in that I'm not on your wall, is what you were doing. You um, were rubbing it in for me. that I'm uh, not on your wall. Anyway, um, it, it really points out, it really summarizes well that uh, what a lot of people have called strategy is just a goal. Yes. It's just a goal. A and it, it's not defining. Or it's a motto. It's an idea. It's not saying what is a strategy. A strategy is saying what is the obstacle that prevents us from getting from where we are to the goal that we have. You know, the revenue, yeah. the profitability, Sim the size. That. You, you could say strategies have steps and they answer the question how. Goals have conclusions and answer the question what. And if you think that you can just say what you want. That ain't strategy. That's bad strategy. Well, it is strategy. It's just bad strategy. It's bad strategy. Right, right. Or even people go, oh, it's got steps. I want to go from 1 million to 10 million. So the next step is 2 million. It's like, that's not, that's not a step. That's just an interim goal. That's a milestone. How you do that, really identifying the obstacle. So it's really powerful. It's saying that most business owners kind of just generally have all this stuff and ram this in, but they don't realize that really cutting away and getting to the, the 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 root issue, the problem to be solved. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of the book Traction, but uh, uh, quite a few members of our mastermind program are, and Kevin on my team is. And the one thing in that book that does resonate with me is this idea of rocks, which is the same thing. What is the strategic problem that we're trying to solve? And are we can we move forward on that? Because that moves the needle rather than be distracted by all this stuff. So Good Strategy, Bad Strategy is a great book to clarify your thinking and identify the real issues and set a potent strategy that is going to propel your business forward. So uh, add it to the list. I've actually got, I've actually got a quote uh, or a, a segment from the book, which summarizes that perfectly. He says, a good strategy honestly acknowledges the challenges being faced and provides an approach to overcoming them. And the greater the challenge, the more a strategy focuses and coordinates efforts to achieve a powerful competitive punch or problem solving effect. That was way too succinct and coherent. There was no way that, that you just came up with that. Well, was that nope, from the book cover? I read it online, <laughs> but I read the book too. Don't think for a moment that I just Googled that crap, even though I, I just Googled that crap. All right, my friend. Okay. So uh, let's move on. Uh, so good strategy, bad strategy is the book of the week. What is the quote of the week? Let's wrap this thing up. We have rambled on way too long. Uh, this was a 10 minute podcast that took 40 minutes, by the way. So right, yeah, right. Wrap it up. So, Give me a good quote. It's all right. Everybody's listening to it at two times speed anyway. So, so the, uh, uh great quote given, uh, given the, albeit technically we're not in a recession, we're in a recession. So, uh, Walt Disney said, I've heard there's going to be a recession. I've decided not to participate. Well and, uh, said. I think that's perfect for business owners because people panic because a recession and, you know, with an economy being down a few percentage points, really plenty of businesses. In fact, the strongest businesses grow the most in times in re uh, uh, times of recession, as we're going to be talking about at the upcoming Success Mastermind meeting that the businesses, Topher, that yep. are prepared for a recession grow more than 400% more quickly, right? Yes. Uh, in the rebound effect, they, they grow much more rapidly because of the preparation. So they have less damage going down in a recession. Some even grow during the recession and they grow much more aggressively afterwards as they take advantage of uh, the opportunities that open up. Indeed. Indeed. Yep. Success Mastermind coming up. I believe it is September 21st and 22nd, if I'm not mistaken, or is it 22nd, 23rd? Uh, I was going to say it's either 21st, 22nd or 20th, 21st. So you know what? That 
heaven forbid us actually get the dates to open. Opening it's up the 20th, calendar it, and it, it is the 20th and 21st. Ah, 20th and 21st of September. Be there. Warwick is the location uh, at War Conferences. Um, if you want to learn more about that, you can check out the show notes or just go to danbradbury.com and start clicking until somebody calls you. And while you're, while you're at danbury.com, uh, make sure you go to danbury.com for slash finance score and take our financial scorecard yeah. and uh, make Chad very happy. Well, actually, uh, if there's any bugs with it, uh, uh, com- might give email him and complain yeah. to him and that, that'll make him unhappy. But, you know, uh, but you will definitely get financially clearer in the process. All right. Wrap us up. Take us out of here, my friend. If you want to be a be- better, if you want a better business, what happens? That, that's what, yeah, I was going to say, that's why I do this bit. So look, <laughs> as always, Topher, there's, there's, there's a lot of drama going on out there. There's a lot of upheaval, upheaval. If you want a better business, you need to be a better business owner. See you next well time. Done. Take care. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Three things you need to do now. Number one, make sure you subscribe to this podcast so you do not miss an episode. Also, get on over to Amazon to get a copy of my latest book, Turnover is Vanity, Profit is Sanity, Nine and a Half Steps to Improving Your Profits and Cash Flow. Also, join our Facebook group, the Turnover is Vanity, Profit is Sanity community to connect with other business owners. 